So here we are going to present one NRMT2 AVD video where we are going to discuss about train of four phenomenon and uh, you can see this video first. So what will the question is the train of four ratio with normal dose of succinylcholine is so we are talking about in cases of normal dose of succinylcholine with normal pseudocholinesterase what is going to be the train of 4 ratio? To answer it correctly, we have to have a pretty clear understanding of uh, train of 4 phenomenon. Let's get into that particular mechanism itself. So, what we are seeing, this is the train of 4 phenomenon uh, being elicited out here. And in cases of no normal uh, cases where there is no uh, neuromuscular block is given, and here the all the amplitude are going to be equal and uh, there is no depression of the amplitude of, uh, uh, no depression of the amplitude out here and the stimulus is 2 hertz and it is given over the 2 second 2 second the whole period is 2 second so the gap between the four each of them is 0 0.5 roughly 0 0.5 and the duration of each stimuli is 200 millisecond 200 millisecond this is millisecond this is millisecond and this is when there is a no uh, when there is no uh, neuromuscular block have been given so in cases of non-depolarizing block or competitive block what is happening in each and every uh, stimuli, successive stimuli, there is a diminishing, uh, uh, diminishing amplitude, and that is where the train of four ratio is getting interesting. Here it is coming up as 0.4, which is needed to ascertain if the block has been started. And uh, here, we how can we calculate if we put uh, it a graph out here? and it is come going up to say 40 and it is going up to 100 so here the ratio is going to be between t4 by t1 40 by 100 it is between t4 by t1 that is how it is coming up 0 0.4 in cases of competitive blocker, it is less than or equal to 0 0.4. 0 0.4. In cases of succinylcholine, which is being in the question, which is a very interesting facet, where there are two types of block. One is phase one block, another is phase two block. In phase one block, this is a normal dose of succinylcholine and normal pseudocholine storage normal pseudocholinesterase both of them are normal so here the amplitude is going to be decreased but all are going to be decreased equally so here also the train of 4 ratio is going to be 1 that is the answer of this particular question in case of phase 2 block when the succinylcholine level is increased or there is a atypical pseudocholinesterase in those cases it mimics the competitive blocker it is mimicking the competitive blocker and why this is uh, happening in cases of competitive blocker and uh, this difference between competitive blocker and uh, non-competitive blocker say this is a presynaptic neuron and this is a, a postsynaptic neuron here the we are going to all acting on the NM receptor NM receptor and in the presynaptic neuron, the competitive blocker is actually acting on both. Competitive uh, blocker is acting on both uh, the presynaptic and also the postsynaptic. They are acting on both. In the presynaptic, the action is decreasing the acetylcholine. So, in each subsequent stimuli, in cases of competitive blocker, the acetylcholine is released, uh, low acetylcholine is released. And uh, in cases of say depolarizing blocker, it is actually acting only on the postsynaptic one, which is uh, acting on the 
this uh, neuromuscular blocker is active on the relaxation of the muscle. So here the no fit phenomena, there will be no fit phenomena. This is the fundamental of this train of four phenomena. Hope you like this particular presentation and let's get into the what is actually have what instrument you actually see in a ICU. This is known as axillaromyograph. Axillaromyograph. And this uh, instrument is actually seeing the function of adapter policies or ulnar nerve, which is the nerve of choice to see it, adapter policies or ulnar nerve. Or ulnar nerve. And one important thing. If this, uh, in cases of competitive blocker or phase two block, what is very very interesting is the fourth one is diminished. Let's say fourth one is diminished out here, is wiped out. In this cases of there will be 75 percent block, 75 percent. The block is going to be 75 percent. If, if the third one is uh, also wiped out, which will happen. If the block is continued in cases of competitive blocker, it is going to be 80 to 85 percent. If in cases of if the th second one is also wiped out, it's 90 to 95 percent. Greater than 75 percent uh, block is good enough to show there is a neurovascular block at issue. Just started. So this is the whole concept of the train of four phenomenon. Hope you like this particular presentation. If you like this particular presentation and if you have any query after this, you can write regarding this video in our Facebook message box, Facebook page message box, not on the profile message box, but the Facebook page message box. And uh, I hope I'm uh, hoping to uh, hear from you and hope you like this particular presentation and continue to uh, uh, follow us in the Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thank you.